This is the era the old time sailors knew, a tiny seaport between two Thames marshes, a handy church as landmark, and forty roistering taverns ashore for the crews of the great clipper ships. You can still come in from the seaward. The great clippers are gone, but the church is there, and so is the Thames. Ashore, the pub signs still talk of the sea, but there's no roistering now. Two miles south, Crayford, a very different picture. A busy dormitory suburb whose cheerful townsfolk never see a ship from one month to another. An attractive suburb. It has a river too. Nothing like the mighty Thames, but the River Cray has its history. Wat Tyler's peasant army camped here in the 14th century, and at this spot 4,000 men were killed when Hengist, the Duke chieftain, did battle with the British tribes. Now it's one of the town's pleasant parks. Well, I've lived in Crayford for nearly the past 40 years, and during that time I've seen it growing from what was almost a rural community to the thriving urban area which it now is. Although there is a diversity of industry in Crayford, I should say about 75% of the population commute to London. And it differs, I think, from Erith in this sense that Erith is a town which has grown up with its traditions round the river and the waterfront. Crayford is a newer community whose population tend to look more towards London, perhaps, than the rural parts of Kent. The thriving town of bright red brick, plastic shop fronts, a town of young families and neat streets. A striking contrast to the town centre in Erith, where a major redevelopment plan awaits approval and the town's largest store stands empty. Still, Erith has its history and its historian. Well, I've lived in Erith for the past 30 years and I've made something of a study of its history. I think the point to note about the origin of Erith is that it was a crossing place on the river. The high ground met the river at this point and this is the only place for some miles upstream or downstream where solid ground does meet the river. You can still see this hill now reaching down to the waterfront. The earliest mention of it is in Saxon, a Saxon chart of the late 7th century. And uh, in the Middle Ages, an important abbey was founded at Lesnes Abbey. The monks of those days were responsible for maintaining the river walls and helped to keep the river banked up and to keep them off the land. The monks of Lesnes lost their home when Henry VIII seized their land. But Henry was constructive too. He had a naval dockyard at this point. It was here that his galleon, the Great Harry, was fitted out by men whose descendants may live in Erith today. Perhaps in the new houses and flats which are everywhere replacing the Victorian villas which were built when the railway came to Erith. People who live here think not of history, but of the children and what's on the television tonight. The Thames to them is a far-off gleam through factory chimneys as they wait for a bus on Friday Hill. work by the river, they'll make electric machinery or cables, or perhaps plywood or chemicals. When they get home at night, they just relax. If they do breed canaries or collect tropical fish or play bingo or learn the guitar, they do it outside Erith, or they manage to keep their interests pretty much to themselves, like the smugglers did in the old days. They say that Erith's forty boisterous taverns often got their liquor through the back door. According to Legion, old-time revenue men had their work cut out chasing the run runners over the stones. This is a smuggler's hideout, or it isn't it ought to be. A dramatic place, and rightly so. It's under the coffee bar of the one bright spot in Erith, the town's playhouse theatre. Everyone's an amateur here. They get no pay, but their performance is polished enough. The theatre's director explained that the cast and their friends have restored a derelict building into a theatre which attracts audiences from as far as Bexley and Dartford. The trouble is that no one seems to know what will happen to this place when proposed new plans for rebuilding Erith bear fruit. 
Meanwhile, the show must go on. To get here in time, these girls rush home from city jobs. They skip meals and study their parts at odd hours during the day. While the camera watched them, a dozen other girls were hard at work painting scenery, fixing lights and moving furniture. I met the producer of the play. Well, I have lived in Erith all my life, and I can remember as a small child being brought up the causeway for a walk by the riverfront, and leaning out from this window in this building at the top of the hill, invariably were the young, smiling ladies waving at the seamen, of course, coming up from the causeway. Grandfather, he had one of the cottages on the hill, and mother and my grandmother were always very nervous at the cellar under the house, because it was, of course, thought that the smugglers' tunnels led down to the river there, so they, bo they bolted all the doors, etc. Of course, here it has changed a great deal since those times, and we as a theatre have seen this, being the only spark of life here almost at the moment, and striving so hard to keep it so, we do, ho do hope that any changes that come along won't be for the worst, so far as we are concerned. briefett has got a strong drama group too, the Jeffrey Whitworth Theatre. Here that the British Drama League was founded, but most people agree there's little to do here or in Erith, unless you have friends to chat with or perhaps the shopping to worry about. Shopping and business are all important. I've been in the play for about four years now, I thought it was growing, and once upon a time it leaned toward Vickers, but now there's so many new factories and uh, places open up in Crayford, uh, it's getting busier every day. At the present era, it's, well, it's rather dead, simply because the town centre is going to be rebuilt, and it doesn't seem much for the younger people here, really. Well, I, uh, I don't particularly uh, approve of them, really, the changes, since it's been uh, industrialized, it's took all the beauty away from the, uh, from the town. Youth and its problems seem to dominate the conversation in Erith and Crayford. Many people spend their spare time helping youngsters. I'm the scoutmaster here. My wife runs the cups up here for me. Apart from scouts, guys, in the area, there isn't much, not, uh, nothing much for the um, young people here. They don't get any enjoyment at all. They have to go up to town, and that does cost quite a bit to travel up here. But we do find in this district that um, scouting and guiding does help the young people quite a bit. Of course, you don't have to wear a uniform. There are several fine youth clubs. Hello, you live in Crete, but what do you think of the town? Well, as far as youth is concerned, there isn't really much for us to do in the evenings. Uh, I'm a member of the Air Training Corps, and we try and cater for the youth of this area. The Scouts, they do the same. They organise dances Saturday nights. Uh, apart from that, on the record club on Thursday evenings, there isn't really much to do. Well, uh, as compared to when I was a youth, it's dead. When I was the age of majority of these members here, we had four cinemas three public dance halls and one swimming bar. They've just got the one public dance, uh, one cinema now, and the nearest dance hall is Clayton. And I don't think they cater for the youth in the dance hall. Well, I've only been here three years, and we came here from the Crystal Palace area. And, uh, well, as far as I can see, it's, you know, it's much like where we came from. I like it all right, but I wouldn't like to live here all my life. So there it is. A pleasant place, if you like, but as one man sadly observed, a town which has turned its back on itself. A small slice of modern Britain, uncomfortable today under the pressure of knife-edge politics.